All right, welcome to the PowerPoint for the image analysis class for the chest and abdomen. This isn't the worst PowerPoint in the world, but it sure is boring. We will go over um, some of the slides here. There's like 120 slides, so I'm going to skip several sections and kind of go over a few things just as highlights for this. Um, the outline you can look over basically to cover all these positions um, and views. Um, there are certain objectives that you should go through. There are several typos for some reason. I do not know why the author would have a PowerPoint and have a bunch of typos in it. I've already corrected like at least 20, but we're going to see a few of them here and there. Uh, just some more objectives. This is really just going to be going over the abdomen and the chest today. Um, the last part of the outline also covers the neonate and infant uh, chest and abdomens. More stuff. Chart. Let's see. Image analysis guidelines. All right. Technical data. SID. 72 inches, as you all know, because of the magnification of the heart and lungs. Um, let's see. Pneumothorax. We're going to cover that a little bit. We talked about this earlier in the first semester. Basically, just a partial collapse of the lung. Um, no vascular markings are going to be seen when you have that collapse in the lung, basically just because you have a giant air pocket in your lung. Pneumectomy, um, if you have a remove, removal of the lung, there will also be no lung markings, obviously, because there's no lung there. You do not want to use the photo cell on that specifically, so you either manual time that or put the cell over the lung that is still there. Uh, pleural fusion, I know a lot of you have not been doing decubes as of yet. Hopefully this summer you'll be able to get to do decubes of the chest and the abdomen. Basically, you are going to increase your technique about 35%. Um, usually, you're not going to have to calculate that. The tech will just give you something with a little higher penetration and a little higher mass. Let's see, free air. Talk about that more uh, likely in the abdomen. So, pneumothorax on this image here is going to be on this side of the lung. You are going to see the lung markings just disappear from the outside portion on here. So, if you look this way towards the lateral portion of the lung, do not see any of these little lung markings going across, kind of feeding that part of the lung because it has been deflated. It's going to look like a balloon that's kind of losing its air slowly. Um, sometimes it can be small like this. Sometimes it can be a complete collapse where you see no lung mark markings at all and you'll see just a little bit of the lung kind of deflated through here. So it's important to make sure that the medial border of the scapulas are pulled forward so you don't have the primary care doctors looking at that and they say, oh, I can see a line here when it's actually from the scapula and not a pneumothorax. Uh, let's see, pick line. So the pick lines actually go in through the left side. They're going to go across the mediastinum and they're going to end up um, more towards the pleural space, towards the, I'll say, just distal to the carina on the right side of the heart. Blunting. Blunting is not a big problem, but when you do not get a good inspiration, this could be a potential problem in here. So if you imagine this done on expiration instead of inspiration, you would not be able to tell if it's just the hemidiaphragm coming up or if there's actually some blunting with that cosmopernic angle because of an elevated diaphragm through here. Free intraperitoneal air. So this right here is outlining the diaphragm at the very smallest edge of it near the cosmopernic angle. You don't want to confuse that with the actual gastric bubble, which you see here. So if you see this kind of free air in here, that's a little bit of a problem because we have a little air just kind of sitting in the lung cavity that's not actually in the lung, but putting pressure on the diaphragm as it wants to move superiorly. Tracheostomy, you can read over on that. And the tracheal tubes, we don't have so much with this, um, especially in adults. You will see the ET tube going through across in there. With kids, it's going to be the denser, kind of wider line that goes across on here. It should go towards the trachea, not all the way down in the carina, but it wants to go through there so that it uh, feeds air towards both the left and right sided uh, lobes. Drainage tubes, you can look over on your own. Just a couple of pictures here. Bilateral drainage tubes on an infant. CBC, see that towards the middle, a little bit on the right side there. You want to make sure it doesn't get all bunched up on a baby, also should be towards the right side 
um, with an accurate um, placement. Pulmonary arterial catheter, don't know much about those. Umbilical vein catheter, just really going through the umbilicus. You're going to see those mostly in kids because in adults, very hard to do. Pacemakers, you're going to see pacemakers quite a bit. Pacemakers are usually going to be on the left side up towards the, uh, I would say the top third of the lung. You're going to see two wires coming across. They're going to go over the opposite side and then the electrodes are going to be into the different parts of the heart. Um, so you want to have a little bit more heart penetration when you're doing uh, pacemakers. ICDs, usually on the right side, they can go underneath the skin pretty much anywhere, but generally you're going to see them on the right as opposed to the left. Mm, PA projection, da, 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 da. rotated PHS, as we talked about before, just look at the vertebral column and then look at the clavicles and make sure they're equal distance away from the spinous process on that. Tilting, we talked about tilting a little bit in this. Make sure you go over this and read it over. It's basically in the di diagram where you have this weird looking dude who looks like he's trying to kiss the bucky and then getting denied by the bucky going this way. But posterior tilt going opposite direction, anterior tilt. Usually if they're a little bit more kyphotic, they'll get this anterior tilt on there. And that's going to foreshorten the lungs a little bit. So you want to make sure they're as straight up and down as possible. 10 posterior ribs showing. Ideal, we'll settle for eight to 10 on most patients because if you have a patient that has some breathing problems, you are probably not going to get 10 posterior ribs on there, but you should at least try for it. And the best way to do that is to take two breaths in. If you do do an expiration on accident or the patient didn't understand you, you should still send it because if they have a pneumothorax, it will actually show up better on an expiration film or possibly if they have a foreign body, it will move a little bit more on expiration as opposed to inspiration on there. Basic PA chest. Analysis practice. Basically look it over. Uh, look at the manubrium, which is going to be down about T4 normally. Right there. I do not lie. Right sternal clavicular end. So this is where you're really going to get into your rib series and how when we turn the ribs, the way the scapula is going to change, the way the Y view is going to kind of come out. Uh, one clavicle will usually go over the midline as opposed to the other one, which has a little bit of spacing in between it. You see that space, you can basically tell which way you need to turn your patient to get a more PA image as opposed to a slightly oblique image. Laterals, not a whole lot I can say about laterals. Just make sure that they're lined up along the back side here. You want to make sure that there's no separation down at the costoferic angles. If it's more than probably on your screen, more than like half an inch, you probably need to repeat it. Generally, your right lung is going to be too far back. So if you can remember that, and if you get an image like this, and it comes out with the rotation with the right lung behind the left lung, then you will have to turn that right hip forward a little bit to get that lined up a bit better. And that's normally how most students and techs will miss this view. 11 thoracic vertebra is demonstrated inferior to the diaphragms, so I'm not taking on full inspiration, so make sure that you're kind of looking at this, look at the um, lumbar and thoracic vertebra, and see if you got T11 on there. If you do, then you probably got a pretty good inspiration. If you don't, then they might have misunderstood you, or maybe they just simply can't get a very deep breath in. Let's see. This slide is wrong. If you look at it here, this does not make sense, okay? This right here is the fundus, the gastric bubble is right here. And we know that that fundus is on the left side, unless the patient has situs inversus for whatever reason, and that that would make this the left hemidiaphragm, okay? Because this is sitting right underneath this diaphragm. So this has to be the left hemidiaphragm, not the right, okay? And what we've told you before, the one that's going to extend downward and be more inferior is typically going to be the right, not the left hemidiaphragm on this. The right lung is going to look bigger because of magnification if this was actually done as a left lateral like it should have been done. AP chest, just try to get as much distance as you can. Doing portables, you want to match up your cassette to the 
basic collimator head, if you will, and make sure that those two are parallel to one another. We want to have the clavicles right around that T2, T3 area, manubrium right below it, like it should be about T4. So if you're not seeing that, this will actually show you how to correct those fairly well. Looking at this, not much apices above here, so probably coming in too much of an angle, patients lying back too much, so I'll make the corrections on that to bring the clavicles down just a little bit more. So you need to angle down towards the patient a bit on this if you don't change anything with the patient position. This one, slightly, uh, let's see, what is this? Right snorkel figure is demonstrated farther from the vertebra than the left. So you've got one end right here, the other one kind of crossing over towards the edge on there, which means the patient is slightly oblique. So we want to make sure that you correct that as much as possible so you're getting a straight on view and not pushing the heart towards one side more than the other. Tubes, pleural fusions. If you're doing decubitus films, you can do them AP or PA. It really does not matter. So if you're having the patient just turn over, you're basically going to have one AP image and one PA image. As long as the patient's on one side, laying on the left side or laying on the right side, you're fine. You don't have to flip them around so you're doing two APs or two PAs on that. This is basically what it's going to look like. I would say the main trick of this is just to get the patient off of the pad. So you have to put something underneath their chest and make sure that they did not roll forward or backward too much. You want to get a perfectly sideways view on this. You can do this either portably with a cassette behind them or you can put them on their gurney and just slide that gurney up towards the wall bucky and then just make sure that the wall bucket is at the correct height. Tubes, you're going to run out pretty soon. we got about three minutes left on this, so if it ends, it just ends. Apical view, orgotic, just trying to get the clavicles above the level of the apices on here. This is generally what it should look like. 45 degree obliques, we don't do these very often, but if you remember the rib series, this is, should be what it's going to look like if you are doing a full 45 degree oblique. Typically, we're going to do shallow obliques just to move the nipples out of the way um, towards one side or the other, because if they have a nipple shadow, it will move over just a little bit. If you do 45 degree obliques like this, then it's going to come completely out of the field of view, so not as useful as those shallow obliques. Babies, just make sure that they are straight on. Usually you just have to tell the nurses to hold them pretty steady so that you can get some good images out of this. And this does not matter whether it's an AP, a lateral, or the decubes on this. You really have to communicate very well with your nurses to figure out how to get the best views on this. Watch the rotation on this. We know on have some misconception that the heart is some, there's something wrong with the heart because of uh, rotation on the text part. And do not put your marker down at the widest point of the body. The marker should be up at the skinniest portion of the chest. Another slightly obliqued image. Angled up too much. Clavicles, you look at them too high. Clavicles should be over the second, third ribs on there. Kids, basically the same. Just watch the rotation on this. You can tell there's rotation on this one specifically because you have the uh, twist ties of open heart surgery off to the side on here. One minute left. Cubes, kids, get the arms up. Watch rotation. Don't worry, baby, they're not going to leave you there. Mark them correctly. Abdomen, there's all sorts of mistakes on this. Just make sure you get the pubic bone on there and you get the kidneys on this. Stupid. This is just not positioned correctly. You're not on the crest, so obviously the symphysis is going to be clipped here. And we are about out of time, so if you have any uh, questions, about the later on slides or general questions, be sure to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.